so i have uh, like we have our team here so we have the ballerina uh, core team uh, so in this session like what we want to do is like a bof session is mainly a community building exercise so ballerina is a, a fully open source project so we want to build a vibrant user community as well as a, a developer community uh, so uh, uh, this is one of the first uh, bof sessions we are having uh, for ballerina uh, so Seneca actually covered comprehensively about uh, the community aspects and you know, the code is and so on. So, uh, um, but we are planning to, so we don't have a uh, strict agenda for this session. So what we are planning to do is like, uh, uh, we, we could do some hands-on stuff, demos and stuff like that, right? Um, so first, like, um, so anytime you want, like you guys can interrupt us during this session. And we could like take questions and maybe look at some code and so on, right? So because like we have been hearing a lot about uh, you know ballerina and so on, like uh, let's see some of these things in action. Uh, so two aspects: we want to uh, build a good, vibrant user community, as well as you know we want to get contributions from uh, an external developer community, right? So if you while using ballerina you find a gap, right? You find that something is missing, right? So you could uh, yourself. Uh, contribute fixes back. Right? Um, I'll just maximize the screen. Uh, It's very hard to work with the mic. Can I leave? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do. I can't really, you know, do anything. <laughs> do we? Do we have a clip on? I'll see if I can put you on the desk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's like an ice cream cone here. <laughs> it it works. Yeah. Uh, so ballerina lang dot talk. So. Um, if uh, those of you have, who have laptops, I would like uh, uh, request you to uh, go to ballerinalang.org and uh, go to downloads and uh, download uh, the distribution. Hello. Hello. Okay. Right. Uh, so we can uh, go to uh, downloads and uh, uh, it's tools plus. So you can see the button is uh, download. So there are two download buttons. So one is uh, download uh, tools plus runtime. The other one is download the runtime only. So basically, this is like uh, the JRE and JDK, right? So uh, uh, tools plus download tools plus runtime is similar to downloading the JDK. So you have the developer tools as well. So uh, the runtime is just the uh, just provides the ballerina runtime environment only. So the tools distribution is about I think uh, six, 16 meg or so, and the runtime only is going to be 5 MB. So when you create your Docker instances and so on, what you would be packing in is just the runtime only. So only during development, you will be using the tools distribution. Uh, so uh, the uh, so when you start, it's uh, good to download the tools runtime. Uh, so I have uh, downloaded that and extracted it. So uh, point, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether this is Uh, so it's uh, okay, 60, okay, 63 MB. So that has uh, everything. So it has the composer, it has the uh, runtime, the tools for building Docker images, uh, the Swagger tooling, and all that. Um, so I'll go to so that's you can't see anything there.
So I have uh, downloaded uh, uh, the 0.95 distribution. Uh, so still we have not uh, like uh, released uh, 1.0 because like uh, we want to get uh, early feedback. Uh, so what we are trying to do is uh, we are trying to get into a cycle where uh, we get into you know CI/CD uh, daily uh, releases. Uh, so at the moment we are doing weekly releases. So the next step is to uh, go towards uh, daily releases. So we are at uh, 0.95 at the moment. Uh, so uh, most of the language features and APIs have sort of stabilized at this point in time, but uh, still uh, there are certain nitty gritty details that have to be polished out uh, before we, uh, we label this as uh, 1.0. Uh, so here we have the, uh, uh, so you, if you just list down, you can see that uh, we have the uh, bin directory and we have the BRE directory which is the runtime. Uh, so if you go, uh, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the bin directory, you would see that uh, there are uh, uh, you have uh, we have the uh, composer and the. We have the compose and the ballerina uh, executable. So, how many of you have uh, downloaded and tried out ballerina already? Okay, so those of you who haven't tried it out, it's you know I would like say it's best if you can like give it a try now, right? Uh, so that would be good. Um, so, um, so we have a bunch of examples here. Uh, just uh, a few examples, but uh, what we recommend is ballerina by example. So if you go back to the website, uh, you can go to uh, documentation, ballerina by example. So what we do, what we are doing here is, uh, so ballerina by example covers all the uh, fundamental or basic aspects regarding the language. So starting from a hello world, we go on to uh, demonstrating other uh, aspects of the language, all language features are demonstrated here. So these are uh, very uh, simple examples. So each example typically demonstrates one aspect of the uh, language, right? So let's uh, go to uh, let's go to the hello world sample. Um, so the documentation is here. So uh, if you want to uh, copy, there is a copy to clipboard button. So we copy that. Um, so let me just. Uh, vi hello dot bell. Uh, so the ballerina files have this extension uh, called dot bell. So I'll uh, first show you how to uh, do this with uh, vi, okay. And then uh, we'll go go and uh, see how to do that uh, with an ID. So we created uh, hello.bell and uh, let's uh, execute, so ballerina run, so that's the command. So let me uh, clear the screen so that you can see. Ballerina run, uh, and you simply give a give the uh, bell file. So it uh, simply executes that. So uh, those of you who were there in my session yesterday would know that uh, you know they are like you could have uh, one of the entry points in your execution entry points in your program could be a main function or it could be a service resource, right? So this is the simplest case where we uh, ran a simple. Uh, main function. So we just printed uh, hello world. Uh, so let's look at how to uh, write a simple service. So again, you can go back to ballerina by example. Um, so we have uh, hello world service. So hello world service here, you can see. Uh, 
it's a service that is bound to the HTTP transport. So it's an HT, uh, service that's exposed on HTTP. Uh, so we have uh, a resource. So we'll simply copy this code and run it. Hello service.bal. So as you can see, we have uh, imported the ballerina.net.http package, right? So, so this, uh, this becomes a, pre a prefix or a, an alias that we can use in the rest of the program. So the HTTP uh, uh, package that we have imported here can be used in the rest of the program with the HTTP uh, alias. So you could import it as something else. So we are working on a versioning strategy as well. So you could import different versions of the same package. So you can say import ballerina net HTTP v1 as HTTP1 and uh, say import ballerina net uh, dot HTTP v2 as HTTP uh, v2 or something like that, right? So then you can use the relevant alias and call the relevant functions in the proper packages. So that's something that we are working on. So if, uh, so if you want to start contributing, that's one of the areas where you can like contribute with your design ideas or even like uh, code patches, PRs, right? Yeah, currently, since you can, uh, we haven't provided any configuration. So by default, uh, what happens is, since we haven't uh, provided any configuration here, it will be running on uh, port 8080. So that's the default. So what you can do is, we can annotate this. So there are like uh, several ways in which you can do this. So you can uh, put an annotation, uh, HTTP config, HTTP colon config, and then you can give the port. Uh, so I'll copy and paste something from a sample. Uh, so then you can say this service is running on this port. So typical, so that's basically like hard code in the port, right? So you want to get it from a config file, typically in runtime, right? So then we have the Ballerina configuration API for that. We are, you know, uh, your configurations can be picked from either system properties, Ballerina runtime variables, or we have a ballerina.conf uh, file. So you could uh, provide your configurations as an external as, as, as external parameters, right? So let's uh, try to run this. So it's very simple. You run it the same way. Uh, could you use Git as a remote uh, repository for a configuration? Uh, you mean point to a. Uh, so what we are working on is we are working on a, a directory lookup thing, which is which should be pluggable. So like uh, you could currently it works with only uh, environment variables and Ballerina runtime properties. Mm -hmm. So uh, one other thing that we are considering is you know uh, uh, plugging to some external uh, directory service like maybe etcd or if you have git some sort of you know plugin mechanism where you can it will do the lookup for you. So you pass pass a key and then you just get the value. So that's an improvement that uh, we have on our roadmap. So I run it the same way, uh, hello service bell. So as you can see now the server has started up. So earlier it was just the main function. Once the main function exits, the program exits. So here it's a service. So Ballerina knows services, right? So it knows that it has to wait to receive request. So, okay, the default port is 9090, right? So it's bound to all uh, interfaces on uh, 9090. So we can now uh, call this service. I can split the screen. Uh, so let me try to, you know, just uh, Give the invoke this with the curl tool. So localhost ninety ninety hello. Right. So okay now. Sorry, it's just. Oh, sorry. I forgot to mention something. 
uh, this something failed hello world that is the context sorry Ah, oh, yeah, 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 sorry, 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 yeah, yeah. Hello world slash say hello, right? So, uh, the thing is like uh, we did not uh, provide. So, those of you who have worked with uh, JAXRS and so on, you know that we have to uh, provide uh, uh, pa the path annotation parameters and so on. Uh, so, in the simplest case, here uh, we did not provide uh, any of those annotations. So, it is uh, just uh, it will take the path parameters by combining the uh, resource name and the service name. So, that is why you know in the service name was uh, service name was uh, hello world and the resource name was say hello. So, we just uh, sent a get request and the, if you do not provide an, if you do not bind an HTTP verb to that particular resource, it uh, by default gets bound to get right. right. Anything, anything, yeah, anything, okay, yeah. Uh, so, everything will be dispatched to the uh, same uh, resource. So, Shafri, do we have an HTTP config sample? Yeah, we can just. Uh, we have something here, right? Search for HTTPS. Yeah. HTTP server from your server. Okay. Where you can see your. So, this is uh, the way you provide the configuration. So, in the previous uh, simplest sample, we did not uh, provide any configuration. So, then it uh, simply works with uh, default values. So, uh, this configuration here allows you to uh, override the path. So, here instead of uh, slash hello world, we uh, simply can call slash hello base path, right. So, uh, again at the resource config, we are mapping it to slash. So, here we can invoke the service saying uh, HTTP, uh, HTTP colon 1995. Uh, so, here it is I think uh, uh, yeah HTTP colon 1995 and you can uh, pass the base path as uh, hello. So, if you are configuring HTTPS, you need to provide some additional details. So, as you can see it is uh, hard coded here, uh, but you know in a when you are uh, deploying this in produ production, what you would do is you would be using the configuration APIs to look up keys, right. So, you just pass the keys of uh, the key store password, cert password, port and so on and you would use that API to look up the values. We support pkcs12, right? Uh, dot pem files. I mean, instead of uh, pem, no pem support. It's p, we use pkcs12 support is there. Uh, so um, I think you can like you can. There are tools to convert between yeah, the yeah, formats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I already did it, but uh, okay. one of my clients uh, uh, wants to use just pem files. I mean, uh, the uh, private and public keys and uh, without. Okay, so at the moment uh, we we don't uh, support that. So we will. There is an ongoing discussion on the Ballerina group, Google group, and there was this decision kind of for yeah. now to not to support pen files on the PKS. Or right. Or what's what's the name? PKS. P the PKCS twelve. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so please contribute because. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it's really easy to convert the pen file to PKS12 with the OpenSSL. Yeah, of course. But on their they simply use the public and private keys, and they they don't want to add 
uh, case stores in order to put their one key and, uh, and use it for uh, Yeah, so have you like, I think that's best. So like uh, we would re really appreciate it if all of you guys can uh, subscribe to the uh, Google group. So it's uh, ballerina-dev, uh, that's the name of the Google group. Uh, so if you can subscribe to that and then you know, uh, uh, we uh, like appreciate your ideas and your contributions and so on. So, so all the development happens, like even the team. Uh, the entire team that is working on this uh, communicates through that mailing list. So I think uh, Joe, can you, uh, shall we have a small session on uh, the composer? So uh, there are a bunch of samples, so I do not like there is no time to uh, go through everything. So uh, just uh, run through the samples, so if you can execute through all the samples, it will give you a good idea and understanding about uh, the language. Will that work? No, that is that's a Mac. Okay, you have that. It is different. Okay. Very good. All right. You want to? So uh, yesterday uh, uh, I talked about the composer and its features. So I'll try to uh, do a bit of a demonstration, like uh, how you can use composer to uh, easily create uh, services uh, and ballerina programs. So uh, yeah. So, uh, I have opened the latest uh, composer uh, uh, point 0.95. So, let us uh, try to create a service uh, with this. So, as you can see, you have the uh, main tool palette here. So, I will uh, drag and drop a, a HTTP service uh, into the canvas. And as soon as you uh, drop the service, you would get the uh, HTTP configuration uh, uh, pop up. So here you can see like all the configuration uh, attributes available for you, uh, like the base path and the uh, port number. Uh, so I'll put a sample. So yeah, uh, once you uh, apply the configuration, uh, you can see the the configuration annotation automatically uh, adds uh, to the service. And then uh, we'll try to uh, do a simple uh, hello world service uh, with this. So if you want, you can uh, use the tool palette to drop in boxes, otherwise uh, you can easily uh, go to source view. Uh, I'll put the split view for this and uh, directly edit the text. Yeah. So 
so that's my service. Let's try to run this uh, with the composer. Uh, can run it uh, by pressing uh, run toolbar, and then you have you can uh, access the try it uh, tool. Uh, so here you can see the service and the resource uh, name automatically uh, gets populated. So if there are multiple services in the same file, you can uh, uh, select them and then uh, you can send the request. So as you can see, you can uh, straight away invoke the uh, service. So uh, to tell a bit about the tool palette, uh, so that's like the, the main uh, uh, tools where the execution starts uh, are listed here at the top. And then you have the, all the top level uh, constructs. And these are like the logic blocks, uh, logic uh, uh, statements. And here you have the connectors and the libraries uh, which you have imported. So, uh, so as you can see, uh, if you go to the top, uh, so we have like a one import, uh, HTTP. So uh, this import gets automatically added uh, when you uh, drop in a HTTP service. So since uh, the import is there, that uh, import library and connect library uh, will be displayed here. Uh, yeah, so if you want to find out more uh, connectors, you can go into connectors and uh, uh, you can see like all the available connectors in the connectors view. So let's try to use a, a HTTP connector in order to invoke an external uh, endpoint. So here I'll move down. And here uh, you can see there's like two tools. Uh, one is called uh, uh, HTTP endpoint and uh, HTTP client. So HTTP client is the connector, and this is the endpoint. Uh, uh, so this would be an endpoint uh, that has a HTTP client connector. So let me uh, show the difference. Uh, for example, uh, if you drop in the uh, endpoint connector. Uh, endpoint uh, to the the canvas. So as you can see, uh, this will uh, add an endpoint uh, to your program, and within the endpoint, uh, so we create a HTTP client connector instance. So. Uh, so I'll uh, use this uh, monkey service uh, to demonstrate the invocation. So I can directly go here. And at the service URL. And uh, Let's say we do a GET request and send the response that we get from that uh, back to the uh, request. So here you can see uh, once you uh, add and get action uh, into the lifeline, so uh, it returns like two values. So by default, we define it uh, as a var. Um, So the first one will be the actual payload uh, that gets written. And the second uh, one will be the, uh, uh, if there's an error, uh, it will return an error to that. So uh, as you know, Ballerina support multi-returns. So in this case, the first one would be uh, an HTTP response, and the second one uh, would be an error. So I'll go to split view. Uh,
and uh, if I want I can uh, ignore the uh, error return with uh, this underscore. So basically in this case uh, I do not want to process uh, the error but in an ideal uh, integration scenario you would want to explicitly uh, handle the error. So then I will uh, set the, the response uh, that I got from the endpoint invocation uh, uh, to the, the uh, service response. Uh, it should be a uh, get string bit. Yeah. So now uh, let's invoke uh, this uh, resource again and see. So you can uh, stop the service and uh, run it again. So as you can see it uh, re, uh, gets the da uh, data from the endpoint and forward it uh, to the uh, client. So that is like the basic uh, with the composer, uh, yeah. Uh, is the endpoint the same if you are using another, uh, uh, I mean ballerina service that you call? Yeah. Or are you using another connector for that? Uh, it, it depends on like. Uh, your scenario. So let's say if you have a, another API defined with Ballerina, so ideally you might uh, create a connect for that. So basically if you have a Saga, you can generate a connector out of Saga and use that connector uh, within. Otherwise you can use the normal uh, standard HTTP connector uh, to invoke that. So can the server URL that you are calling on the endpoint be a name instead of a URL so that you can have sort of as a calling a service by name instead of a URL, if you have multiple instances up and running of the, the same service. Host name, is it? Oh. I meant more like uh, in service discovery case where you okay. launch uh, lots of services of the same instance and uh, then you want to invoke them by name, not by a specific address because okay. you want to have load balance between them. Uh, is there any support in the language for that? At the moment, uh, you don't have that. Uh, so, you are basically naming the instance and then you want to call it by name instead of uh, URL. Uh, but we do have uh, a load balance uh, endpoint in the HTTP uh, connector, so you can uh, simply uh, have a have load balancing and then you can have multiple endpoints there and uh, you know depending on the load balancing algorithm, the load balancing will take place. So Okay, you have that, but uh, you are there's saying there's no after discovery. You have to sort of register every endpoint. In uh, all right, well, that can be done done dynamically as well. So it mm -hmm. can come to a, from a config file. You could mm -hmm. load the endpoints and then maybe to a DB lookup or whatever. So the dynamism is there, but uh, I think what you're asking is uh, you have certain services which are named, certain service instances which are named, and you want to invoke them by name. So that's pre-configured. The name to URL mapping is pre-configured somewhere else. Uh, we don't exactly have that out of the box, but uh, it's not really difficult to implement. Thanks. Are there any failover mechanisms? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, where if you call one map service and it's done, or through the naming or through the addresses, the load balancer, will it just do round robin, or do you have any other? Uh, we have round robin software. Uh, do we want to answer that, the failover? Failover, actually, we haven't implemented yet, but. Uh, yes. We are planning to implement uh, some failover endpoint as well. So, what you want is uh, uh, 
uh, some sort of a failover that act has a load balance as well, I guess. So you have few endpoints. If one endpoint fails, uh, you want to try the other uh, the other endpoint. Yeah. Something like that, right? So at the moment, uh, we haven't implemented anything like that. But under resiliency uh, features, we are planning to implement failover as well as uh, load balance. So he's Shafrin and he's the HTTP guy. Uh, yeah. So if you see him, see his name on the mailing list, now you know whom you're talking to. <laughs> so any HTTP question can go to him. Uh, Joe, yeah. you have uh, anything else? Uh, no, that's about it. OK. Uh, right. Uh, so I'll just, I think, show uh, something related to, to the IntelliJ IDEA plugin. So we have an IntelliJ IDEA plugin, uh, which has the code completion and all that stuff. So we'll just uh, maybe look at that and maybe look at uh, Docker. I'll just take two minutes to do that. And yeah, I think this might be easier. <laughs> So we have a, uh, a plugin for that's it. Uh, so we have a plugin for the IntelliJ idea. Uh, so you have the it has the syntax highlighting, auto completion, and so on. Uh, so you can uh, go to uh, preferences and uh, you can just uh, search for uh, the ballerina uh, ballerina uh, IntelliJ idea plugin. So it's uh, the uh, you might uh, so this is up to date with the current current uh, grammar, uh, but uh, when the grammar undergoes changes, what we do is we uh, frequently release the idea plugin as well. So you might have to uh, you know update it. Um, so what uh, this allows you to do is um, so if we go to the so you have to. Uh, uh, configure the plugin to po point to your ballerina uh, runtime because it needs to uh, find a runtime. The pl plugin uh, just provides the ID functionality only. You have to uh, point to an existing runtime and configure it. So we downloaded ballerina tools uh, 0 0.95. So you can simply point to that directory, and uh, the rest of the things will be handled by the plugin itself. So now when I uh, I can let's create a new project, uh, new project. I hope you can see this. So it's it just says ballerina. So it uh, a, a new project type called ballerina appears here. So we can uh, create a new ballerina project. Let's say next. Uh, and here, if you haven't uh, configured the ballerina ballerina SDK. Uh, it will prompt you to configure it here. So we can just go and provide the uh, ballerina home directory, right? So uh, I extracted it at uh, software ballerina tools. So we can just uh, point to that, right? So uh, that's my ballerina runtime. So just uh, give, uh, give a name for your project. And has created the project for me. So let's go to presentation mode. No, I'll just view. OK. 
okay, I don't know. So I'll create a new uh, ballerina file. So it's a uh, new ballerina file. So I'll just call it hello or something. Uh, So it uh, generates, uh, uh, it will just uh, generate the main function for you. So you can uh, run it from here itself. So when you uh, go there, you can uh, run or debug your program directly from the IDE. So this, uh, so it uses the terminal there to uh, run it and uh, print or execute the program. So uh, try out the ID plugin, and uh, you know if you have any feedback or contributions, you can get back to us. Uh, so that's for the ID plugin. So let me just show you uh, run the Docker command, and then uh, I'll be done with it. Uh, so uh, previously we created this uh, hello service, right? So we created the hello service. So uh, I want to now package it into a Docker image and I want to run it, right? So uh, ballerina docker is the command to do that. So ballerina bin slash, so I'm in this directory. Hello service. Uh, do you want to create that? Okay, yes. So it's building the docker image now. So it has uh, successfully built the Docker image. So I can say Docker, Docker images. Sixteen seconds ago. So this is the image that it just built. Sixteen seconds ago, right? So it's as simple as that, right? Creating, making a ballerina program into a Docker image is just a command away. So now we can uh, simply run that. Uh, it, it actually gives you the Docker command. You just have to copy and paste this. So image ID latest is the tag. So I'll Docker run, uh, and you can uh, run that. So first, first of all, uh, let's do a Docker ps. So there are no uh, insta Docker instances running. So let me uh, run this instance, docker run, uh, and then I'm running uh, this particular service. So it's uh, running in the foreground in this mode. So I can go to a, let, let me split this docker ps now. Docker ps. Mm. You can see uh, there's one instance running, right? So this is the uh, instance ID. So now it's uh, we. We exposed it on. Uh, The default port, so I'll, I, we can do do a port mapping. So again, we can just uh, copy and paste with a port mapping. So internal port to external port mapping. So that's running Docker PS. Now there should be two instances running. Okay, the previous one was uh, 
I, I killed it ran in the foreground. Uh, so now I can just do a curl 50165 is the port. So it uh, now it we invoked that particular instance which is uh, running inside the Docker uh, container. Um, so there are a bunch of stuff like that. So you can if you do a Docker uh, ballerina help. Uh, so you can uh, give a Swagger file. So you can start with a Swagger file and So it uh, provides the options. So you have Docker, uh, swagger, Ballerina run, uh, Ballerina Docker, Ballerina Swagger, and so on. So if you want to test so the Testerina, you guys heard about uh, Testerina as well in a previous session. So if you want to uh, run your tests, you can uh, do Ballerina test. So uh, all of the basic functionalities that are required for you to run in a uh, containerized or container native uh, manner, uh, and uh, for you to like properly uh, go through the entire software development life cycle is uh, built into Ballerina. So, and we actually uh, help developers do the correct thing. So, there could be functions which uh, return certain variables, right? So, you might have some return values, right? Uh, so, in Java, so those of you who have used find bugs and so on know that uh, if you ignore the return values, it might be considered as a find bug error, right? If you use find bug. So, uh, the thing is the language does not force you to think about the return value. So, when you do a file dot close, it returns a boolean, right? You are not forced to handle that. But in Ballerina, what if you uh, if you want to ignore the return value, you have to say underscore equals and call the function. So, that means as a programmer, I am actively, you know, I know that, you know, this, I am not interested in the return value. You have to indicate that, right? So, uh, the language uh, forces certain best practices like that. So I think uh, next, uh, so one of the uh, easiest things, so we want more contributors from the community. So one of the easiest things that you can get started with is by writing Ballerina connectors. So Mahika in her next session will just go through a bit of code which will show you how to get started with uh, writing a connector. Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll just start by invoking a simple uh, mock API, and we can write a connector wrapping that uh, API call. So I'm just going to call this uh, mock API that I have created here, which has just some details about, uh, say, a customer. So first, I uh, will write a main program to invoke this service. So create a new uh, Ballerina file, drag and drop a main function. So you can just run this main function uh, 
uh, and invoke the API. So, first I will drag and drop an HTTP endpoint to this. All right, and the service URL I will get the service URL from this mock API and put it over here. So this declares the endpoint. Let's just go back on the tool palette. Uh, so uh, this is a side by side view of the uh, sequence diagram and the source wave. So I'll just keep both of these open so that you're clear on what the source and the design will look uh, at the same time. So once we have this HTTP endpoint here, we can make a GET request. Just uh, drag and drop the GET action here. So you can see that the action invocation will draw invocation arrows to the endpoint and back. Uh, so as we also discussed in earlier in Joe session, uh, and our CSS as well. So this uh, endpoint.get at HTTP get will return two uh, variables. First is the response and the second is the error. So we can just choose to ignore the error. So we can say underscore and here we will define an HTTP response. And we'll set the response over here. Uh, let's just print this response. Uh, we can say print ln and response dot get JSON payload. So I'm making the changes on the uh, source side of the split view, and you can see that the design gets synced at the same time. So when there are when I'm uh, typing the source, when there are syntax errors, the design view gets uh, locked. So because we cannot draw a design when the syntax is not correct. So let's just run this. Uh, before running, I'll save it. And run it from here. OK. Uh, Yeah, that's correct. All right, so the so we have the the API call with this only mockable.io, but it's actually mockable.io slash customer. So I missed that part. So. I need to append it to the URL over here in the get path. That's range or oh, slash. Is the service might be done. Response, response, yeah. Then say response dot uh, get JSON payload. No, we had it earlier, right? Ah, okay. So the response object has the payload, so you just need to do a getter to get the payload based on the type of the payload. So there are a bunch of methods over here. If it's JSON, it's get JSON payload. And if it's a string, we have get string payload and so on. So uh, let's try to write a connector to wrap this up. Uh, so we can first do a drag and drop a connector over here. So we will keep the main function here as it is so we can invoke the connector from here itself. So we'll just uh, drag a connector over here. Let's call it uh, customer connector. 
and the URL for the connector. So since we are wrapping this HTTP endpoint, uh, the same URL will be passed uh, during the initialization. And this action will just call it get customer. Uh, so this is just a simple API which will re uh, return a static customer response. So we will just have it as get customer, but in an ideal case, you might have other parameters. So within this get customer, we will call that HTTP endpoint and uh, get the response. So I'll just copy this code from over here. Uh, so we will return the response object here as well. So when you're writing your uh, actions in the connector, you can decide what you're going to return as the response of this action. So here I will just return the response that I get from the API itself. So if you take a look at uh, over here, we can define the returns here. Uh, what returns, uh, what gets returned in this action. So I will just have HTTP response type over here. So you can see that the design view and the source view uh, get synced. So let's go back to this main, pro main function. Uh, I'll get rid of all this, get rid of this endpoint. And we will try to invoke it uh, with the uh, using this connector that we just created. So uh, you go to the current package and it will show the connector that you just created. You drag an endpoint from this and the URL is monkable.io. And we will call this get custom action on it. Uh, Okay, so the source we will have created an endpoint called a uh, customer connector. Sorry about the formatting, uh, just some work going on here. So I'll just uh, format it so that it get it's clear. So we have the endpoint customer connector called uh, customer endpoint. And uh, here we will use the customer endpoint and call the get customer. And uh, just uh, now that we are getting the response returned from this action, uh, let me format this as well for clarity. You won't have to go through this hassle every time. So. so we are getting returning this response object. So I will do the same print ln that I did earlier. So print ln. So instead of wow one, let's give response. We'll give the type of the response as HTTP response. And let's run this. OK, so you have your own uh, connector created here and an action wrapping the, wrapping the functionality of invoking the real HTTP endpoint. And then you have the response uh, received by invoking this get custom action. So this is a simple uh, connector scenario. And uh, there are some other complex connectors where you create base connectors, uh, like to create decorated connectors. I think most of them were covered in the session yesterday. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right. So like. Is there some sort of Sorry. repository for, for the connectors that you can share between developers? So we have the Ballerina repository, Ballerina. If you go to GitHub, uh, you you mean about the connectors that we have written? Uh, I think oh, a, a sort of a custom connector. Oh, yeah. OK. Ca so a connector, a global ca connector store sort of thing. So that's the concept yeah. that uh, yeah. we are working on, where you can actually 
like we will have our connectors as well as you know they will uh, you can contribute to external connectors so it's a sort of a connector store yeah you can uh, pull those connectors and uh, use them yeah. so so we so one of the things that uh, are on our roadmap is to you know develop connectors to some of the popular apis anything else any other questions Sometimes on, on USB you can do uh, you, you can uh, do this. You can disable this checking okay, and yeah. uh, sending the question type. Right. How this is possible on uh, what game? Uh, chunking. So directed to how you <laughs> enable <laughs> and disable chunking. <laughs> so. Just don't say that it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's possible. We just implemented with this release. <laughs> so basically, how you can do is. Uh, when you create the client connector, here you can, uh, I, I don't think you can see it and the mic is working. Do you, uh, you have an uh, idea so I can directly show them? Oh, OK, I'll show it here. So uh, here you can see that uh, when we create the connector here, right? we have passed a default configuration. Instead of passing default configuration, you can say, uh, uh, you had a body like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, I, I can hold it for you. There. I can hold it for you. <laughs> Shall I? Okay. All right. So here, uh, you can show me the design view as well. Uh, if you can switch to the design view. Uh, so how do you take the options? Take the options. So connect options over here. Chunk disabled. Okay, we have the. Oh, yeah. you, are, you guys have added there. Oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> good to know. So you can do it like this. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Maybe you can so, show the source that was generated. You can just say apply. And uh, go back to the source view. And you can go to source view. Yeah. And here you can see now the configuration is there. Uh, do you guys have anything related to connectors? Any questions? <coughs> OK. Aziz, you want to take over? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Anjana will simply wrap up by, uh, I think, talking a bit about how you can contribute and so on. Uh, hi, guys. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about the internals of the banner language and the runtime, uh, how we basically build the whole thing. Uh, if you're interested, the compiler stuff, the runtime, the VM, these things. Um, um, so it's the coffee break right now. Um, but let, we'll let Anjana go on with it. I'm sure you find it quite interesting to stay on. Um, but we're having two uh, case studies which are starting at 3.30 with ING Model Bank uh, on building the next generation banking middleware. Uh, and also another uh, company, Inoika, um, at 4 o'clock. So we'll just keep going on in this track, all right? OK. Um. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, if you guys uh, are planning on contributing in the code level, uh, so you have to have a rough idea on how, how the internals work, like the compiler and the VM and so on. So if you are contributing features to the language itself. So I'll, I'll quickly go through the, uh, like the, the, the pipeline we are using uh, from starting from the compiler. Uh, and so you will have an idea on how things work. So uh, basically, so everything starts with the, uh, the, the, the language grammar we have. Uh, so we use Antler, Antler 4, uh, for defining the uh, grammar. So uh, OK, let's do a CSS string. OK. OK. Um, so uh, 
just uh, look for the G4 file, so the the lexer and the parser stuff are there. So if we just look at the parser, um, the rules are mentioned here. So if you want to add a new construct or anything like that, you have to start from here. So um, after that, uh, basically, uh, uh, you will generate the parser from uh, Antler. Uh, so there's a command, basically, which gives the uh, uh, the the the, uh, the grammar file and the target package and so on and so on. So uh, we we are we have a document uh, which is work in progress which has all this information on where to start, uh, how to change this, and how to compile and so on, how to how to update the compiler. Uh, so uh, we'll be making it available soon. We'll uh, send it to the public list. Uh, so before that, I'll just go through this quickly. Uh, so after you generate the parser. So it's available uh, in the model. And uh, so after that, everything starts with this uh, compiler class. So it's in the uh, Barrera Lang module. If you check out the uh, code, uh, the, the, the Barrera project in Barrera Lang organization, you'll get these several modules. And uh, Barrera Lang is the, the starting point for everything. And uh, so uh, in the compiler, basically, um, the, 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 so we have uh, several phases on how we do the compilation. So, uh, so pa starting with the passing of the uh, Barona file, uh, we create a, a, a model out of that. Then we go through several phases to come to the code generation part. So, uh, uh, so basically, uh, before that, I'll explain. Uh, so, uh, Barona is uh, basically a, a bytecode language. So, basically, we create a bytecode format from the source, which we have. And we have a VM which executes the code. So it's somewhat similar to the uh, Java uh, bytecode. So and it's the, again, in the runtime, it's like the uh, Java VM. Uh, the VM interprets the bytecode, basically. <coughs> so the compiler's job is to first create the bytecode. So uh, for that, uh, if you, okay, maybe this is not that clear, uh, if you start with the uh, uh, the, the, the compiler class, there's a method called compile. Uh, uh, so there, uh, you, uh, we, we start with uh, first uh, getting the uh, uh, file passed from Antler and getting the model. So uh, that's happening here. Uh, yeah. Um, so it basically gets the uh, source. Uh, so we have, before that small thing, so we have this repository concept where they uh, basically find where the bell files are at. So basically, they look up a specific repository and loads the ballerina files and gets uh, and basically pass it. Uh, so basically, that's what's happening in this uh, uh, load package method. Um, we basically use the parser to get this blank package object. So um, uh, after that, uh, so uh, all this, I said, so we have these phases that we use in the compilation. Um, so uh, these phases consist of basically uh, different visitors. So we use uh, the visitor pattern to handle all of these situations. So multiple visitors are defined for each of these phases. So uh, I'll give a high level uh, idea. So the phases consist of first uh, the, the definition of the symbols. So symbols are like uh, the, the functions, variables, and so on. So each symbols should be defined first. Uh, when the when the when the, uh, there's another part called semantic analysis. In the semantic analysis, we have to look up the existing symbols. Like in the code, if we have like a function calling or anything like that, that symbol should be defined first. So uh, that's the first thing that's happened. This is called the symbol enter phase. Uh, so uh, in this symbol enter uh, visitor, that's what we do. So uh, if you, uh, there's a basically a class called symbol enter. Uh, so there you visit the VLAN package, and it will uh, in turn calls it uh, child uh, other uh, 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 constructs like. Uh, the functions, structs, and so on. And it will again uh, visit those constructs. So basically, after you 
complete this visitor, all the symbols will be defined in the environment. So, and uh, after that, so in the compiler, in the compile uh, method, so the compilation, so basically uh, in these steps, uh, we may not need to move forward in some phases. Like for example, if there are uh, errors that are not recoverable, uh, like um, that it recover means like uh, if, if it doesn't make it doesn't make sense to go forward with some kind of errors, we will stop there. So that's why we have you know, for each phase we have a condition saying we check if we should ch stop there or not, or else we continue the next phase. So um, uh, uh, so um, so th that's logic is done is stop compilation method. Um, so in that way, uh, so. Uh, it is in this define method we do the symbol enter, so basically the passing and the symbol enter. So after after uh, that part, we basically so this type check method basically do the semantic analysis. So semantic analysis means uh, basically now we have all the symbols and the, the the basic structure of the program. Now we check the correctness of the program. So whether uh, uh, if something are done according to the rules, you no, know, the syntax rules, the other ones. So, for example, um, in an if statement, only a boolean expression should be there. There can't be expression that returns an integer, and so on. So, those kind of uh, semantic analysis done in this semantic analysis phase. So, um, so we have a, a class called a visitor called semantic analyzer. So, basically, we go through that also again and do this analysis. So after uh, that has happened, we are sure that uh, the, the in that um, uh, area, this is correct for up to that extent. So in the semantic analysis, uh, we, use this, we use this, uh, basically the, the type checker uh, visitors also. So basically, uh, in semantic analysis, uh, I'll, I'll get that uh, if statement example. Um, Um, let's see. Um, yeah. Uh, so, if uh, a statement when I'm analyzing that, I'm basically checking if the if node expression is of type boolean. So this is done by the uh, type checkers check expression exp uh, the operation. So in the type checker also they have a visitor. And uh, they basically go through that flow in figuring out the, what this expression uh, is returning. And we are checking whether it's, it matches to be a Boolean. So likewise, this is done for each of the constructs uh, that are available. So, uh, so basically, after the semantic analyzing, uh, analyzer phase, um, the expressions are resolved, the types are set, and uh, so uh, so that part is done, basically. And uh, if we go to the compiler again, so the next part is called uh, code, an code analysis. So code analysis basically uh, do things like uh, it, it checks whether uh, the, the program is valid uh, when we consider uh, statements separately, like uh, different different statements if the, if the combination is correct. Uh, so for, I'll give an example. So uh, 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 a break statement uh, or uh, like a, a loop break statement and so on cannot be uh, there without a loop, obviously. So it should be in a while loop. Uh, so if it's outside somewhere, we have to give an error. So things like that are covered here. And uh, there are other things like worker interactions and so on. Uh, so all those kind of analysis is done in this code analysis phase. Um, and there's another interesting uh, uh, phase called the D-sugar. So uh, uh, here what it does is it um, uh, basically, so uh, we have uh, things like uh, syntactical sugar, uh, things like, um, let's say, um, okay, what's an example? Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, so we have things like binding uh, function to structs. So uh, so that's how we get like, uh, a sh uh, we give a struct 
uh, instance name dot some function. So it actually works in a way that uh, uh, when you are defining the thing, uh, actually there should be a function, and the first parameter should be the struct and the other parameters. So uh, uh, that that's the runtime behavior. Uh, so uh, so in the in the in the in the runtime, so actually uh, we had to call it like that the function. We give the fu uh, uh, struct and the other parameters. But uh, in the code, we what we have a shorthand version where you can give the struct itself and dot the function. So that's syntactical sugar. So it's like a shorthand version. So what we do is, in this phase, we uh, translate it. We translate it to the, uh, the 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 common common format, which is the just the function. Then the first parameter is the struct and so on. Uh, so uh, then it's easier for the uh, like uh, downstream action, like the code generator. So it doesn't have to uh, consider all different different combinations of doing the thing. So uh, those kind of things are done in the D sugar. And uh, finally, after that, we do code generation. So code generation is basically again we have a code gener visitor. Uh, here we basically generate the uh, bytecode required to all the statements, expressions, and so on. So, um, so uh, it is also pretty straightforward. Again, I'll get that if if example. So the statements are like this. So you basically emit uh, instructions. So this is how an if statement is implemented. So we have said uh, bytecode instruction like break for if false, go to, and so on. So basically. Uh, uh, Combine these different instructions to basically get the uh, logic for the if statement. So uh, that's it. So that's that's how the, uh, the the main flow of the compiler. So after this, these uh, bytecode instructions are translated to the, uh, the the binary format, and uh, that is the one that will be used by the VM. So VM is also. Uh, I'll quickly show the VM. <laughs> Uh, B. Blang VM. If you go to that class, so it's it's basically a huge switch case statement. So uh, basically, it goes to each bytecode instruction and uh, interprets the uh, bytecode. Mm. So this is that. Uh, uh, big uh, switch case statement. Um, so uh, yeah, so basically, uh, it basically inter interprets what what needs to happen and uh, it changes the state of the virtual machine. So uh, you can just go through this and see like it's uh, not that hard to understand what's happening here. Um, you may be wondering like some some uh, of the instruction in the switch case we have grouped them and called another method here. So uh, this we do uh, for for an optimization reason. So, uh, so we had an interesting situation with this. Uh, without uh, this approach, when we have a huge uh, switch case, uh, the Java VM uh, uh, doesn't uh, basically jit the code in the runtime. So uh, basically, it, it it has a rule saying if it has to be this small for it to be able to jit it. So uh, to basically co convert it to machine code. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so we had a situation where because it was too big, eventually it got added uh, more instructions and it basically jumped that limitation and our thing suddenly got very slow. So uh, <laughs> we were wondering like what's happening? Okay, <laughs> and uh, after some debugging, we we found that uh, okay, this specific method is not getting uh, compiled at runtime. So for machine code uh, generation. So uh, that's why we, we have uh, split up this big method into small, small uh, other methods and uh, uh, made it work like that. So now uh, the JVM jits uh, this properly and it's back to normal. So there are small interesting things like that. So um, uh, uh, if you guys are interested, I would recommend just to go through the VM code. Uh, it's not that complicated uh, uh, to understand. So it's so this is basically like uh, the Java's uh, 
bytecode format. So it's like mostly there are very similar ones. Uh, only main difference with the VMs are uh, the Java VM is a stack-based uh, VM, but we have is a register-based one. So that's the the main difference. Uh, other than that, it, the concepts are all the same, uh, mostly the same, uh, and uh, you can you can pretty easily understand it. So um, that's uh, it for the general path from the compiler to the VM. Uh, any questions? Okay, guys, so we'll be around. Uh, so if you have any further questions, like we, we can chat and know. Uh, thanks, thanks.